Hey now folks, today we're taking a look at Zombicide Season 2 Prison Outbreak. Now this is a standalone game in the Zombicide series of game expansions, but also it can be fully compatible with the base game of Zombicide, here's a 4 called Season 1, and it has basically the same fundamental mechanics as the normal zombie side, but adds a few little tweaks and some new additions, including the idea of not being eliminated from the game when you die, which was a huge complaint from the first game. But is it worth your time if you didn't like the first zombie side, or if you never played the first zombie side, or if you have already played zombie side, you loved it, and you don't know if you want to take the dive on a whole other expensive set. Well, let's take a look. Okay, I'm not going to give you an entire walkthrough of how to play Zombicide again. If you want to see how to play Zombicide, you can play my original video and then go and find a more comprehensive rules resource online if you just want to find out about the game. But I'm just going to show you some of the new stuff that comes in Zombicide Season 2, which I'll remind you is a standalone game but can also be uh, backwards compatible with the original zombie di Zombicide. So first you have six brand new survivors along with the miniatures for them. So you have Shannon, Kim... Joshua, Bell, Watts, and Grindlock, and they all have special abilities, many of them at their first level, like all the other uh, survivors, and they all, uh, many of them are very new to the game, there's a huge uh, index in the rulebook that tells you what they all do, and remember of course that when you get up to orange and red you have even more special abilities that are unique to the survivors, they all have the same yellow ability. And here's all of their different minis, which they they really did a very, very good job with the miniatures in this one. I mean, the zombie side, original miniatures look good as well, but for some reason, maybe it's just because I'm seeing them for the first time, they looked really, really fantastic. I think they really, Clumini or not, does, uh, certainly lives up to their name. Now, an interesting new thing to this game is that if you take your character cards and flip them over, you see that there is a much more fiendish and uh, zombie-ish side to these characters. That's because in this game there is such a thing as zombivores. When a character would die from having two wounds like they normally would in Zombie Side, instead they're going to go down just like they normally would, but at the start of their next turn they resurrect. You'll uh, get rid of their standard miniature and replace it with one of these zombivore miniatures. And you'll also flip over your character card to their zombie vor side as well. So, you, And basically what happens is you still have control of your character. Your XP stays the same, except that you cannot use your f plus one free action when you hit the yellow. But everything else stays the same. You even keep all of your equipment. Except that now you... And, and you remove your wounds. And now it takes five wounds to kill you. So actually this kind of makes the game much easier. And it certainly keeps players from being eliminated. Uh, but it also can really help you out even if you're experienced players uh, through a long campaign. And this, I'll show you some of the kind of freaky artwork for the zombie vor versions of these characters. And so on and so forth. So, anyways. Some of the other stuff that comes with the game. You have lots of little new bits and tokens, which are all going to be specific for certain scenarios. So now you have uh, specifically colored doors. Some of the zombie spawn points have different colors. Uh, and each scenario will tell you what you should and shouldn't use. You have these little breakers and electric doors because this game is going to take place in a prison. So during certain scenarios, you'll have to activate switches to open doors. And in fact, some, some of the tiles are turning rooms like this where you can only get in through one side and you have to flip a switch to move the room around. And this helpful thing like a control room plus barbed wire. Now, Barbed wire is an interesting new mechanic in this game because most barbed wires can prevent you from walking through, but an abomination can walk right through barbed wire. And if that happens, you'll put out one of these tokens, which represents an open path for the survivors to now go through. You'll simply put it on the tile on that edge that they go through. Speaking of the abomination and the zombies, uh, some of the, there are the same zombies from Zombie Side in this game with new sculpts, which is really, really cool of them to do. And the abomination looks awesome in this version. And here's the new version of the runner, which I like except for that peg holding up the leg, which I understand why they had to do it, but it still looks kind of dumb. Um, new walker zombies, nothing too special there. 
Uh, the new fatty is definitely uh, much more well endowed than the last version of the fatty. But then there's a new type of zombie, and they're very similar to the other zombies, and they're called berserker zombies. Uh, here's an example of one of them. They're all sort of orange, rust-colored, uh, and they come in the same varieties. There's your typical walker. Here is the fatty, which looks much more similar to the original fatties. And here's the runner, which is probably one of my favorite sculpts, because I just think it looks so cool and dynamic the way it's running. But... Uh, and anyways, and well, actually, I would have to say that this is probably my favorite sculpt. It's just the uh, Abomination Berserker, or Berserker Abomination. This looks really, really cool, right out of like Resident Evil. But anyways, what is different mechanically about these Berserkers? It's the fact that you can only kill them with melee weapons. Other than that, they are exactly the same as their counterparts, although they do also have special cards that will tell you when they come out as opposed to the other zombies. Whenever there's this little dagger symbol there and in the background here, if that comes up, you're gonna grab one of those zombies, but you're grabbing one of the berserker versions of those zombies. Now, there are new map tiles as well because of course, this version of Zombie Side takes place in a prison. So most of them don't have anything too special about them, except that of course, uh, they just, you know, uh, to my, in my opinion, much better artwork, much cooler, and more dynamic, although sometimes it's a little bit too busy with things going on there. There's more barbed wire. Like I said, an abomination will walk right through that and make a path for you, although you still have to deal with the abomination. Uh, and using the switches and control room gates is, like for instance here, is an interesting way to add new types of different scenarios and variation to the game. Uh, but all the old rules still apply. If you go into a building, you're going to have to worry about new zombies spawning out. Sometimes there are alleyways in between buildings, inside buildings that you have to worry about and determining how you're going to move. But basically, the core of the game is still zombie side, just with a lot of extra stuff, new ways for you to... Oh, and a Volkswagen Beetle, because why not? <laughs> uh, new ways for you to kill zombies, new ways for the zombies to kill you. That's Zombie Side Season 2 Prison Outbreak. Actually, real quick, sorry, I forgot. I wanted to show you some of the new item cards. There are new item cards in the game, and I actually think they're, some of them are really, really cool. Uh, you have a Wakazashi, which teams up with the Katana, which is also a new card pretty well. If equipped, you get a plus two, uh, once, or plus two dice with a Katana. Uh, here's my personal favorite, and I love this. I love the fact that you can dual wield them. You have gun blades, very versatile. You can use them as melee or range. You can dual wield them, matching set ability, really, really cool. You have a riot shield, which is as equipped. You gain the tough skill, which helps you live, uh, or you can discard it to prevent a wound inflicted for the wearer. Hatchet, silent way to kill a zombie. Katana, very, very cool. Lots of dice you get to roll. Uh, now, the baseball bat is interesting because it's a pretty decent weapon in and of itself. But if you can find the baseball bat, and if you can find the nails, you can go ahead and make yourself a nail bat, which is even better. <laughs> uh, Kukri, which is okay. It's uh, matching, another matching set one. The concrete saw, you can't beat that. It lets you open doors, but opening doors and killing zombies is obviously very noisy. Meat cleaver, cool little melee weapon. The automatic shotgun, love that thing. That's just fantastic. The Nightstick, one of the new starting equipments. Uh, if equipped, you can discard it to prevent a wound afflicted to the wearer, but otherwise as a weapon, it kind of sucks, obviously. And the Claw Hammer, which is cool just because it can silently kill zombies and silently open doors, so not bad. That's Season 2 Prison Outbreak. There are expansions that just add more of the same, and then there are expansions that add tons and tons and tons of the same but a little bit nicer. And that's essentially Zombie Side Season 2 Prison Outbreak. Now, I loved the original Zombie Side. It's one of my top 10 co op games, despite the fact that many, many people do not like this game outright, either because of the zombie theme or the somewhat simplistic mechanics or some of the fiddly rules. And I'll just get this out of the way the fiddliest rule in the game that everyone hates and everyone knocks on is still in this game. And in fact, because there are new types of zombies, there are there's a new hierarchy order. And the survivors are still at the top. You are still shooting your survivors, your other fellow party members, first when you fire into a zone. <laughs> you just have to get over it. I don't necessarily like it either. To me, it does not break the game in any kind of meaningful way. But to other people, it does. And if it really was that big a deal to you, if you were hoping that they fixed it, I'm sorry, that is not the case. What they did fix in a very odd way is the idea of player elimination, which was the second biggest complaint. 
and was a more legitimate complaint because some of the scenarios from the original zombie side, whether you're talking about the homemade scenarios that people can make or the stuff that's right in the rule book, could go on for a long time. And it's not a lot of fun when everyone, and especially in a cooperative game, when everyone else is still playing and you are out. For some reason, it feels less bad if it was a competitive game, but this is a fully cooperative game. Uh, so, but they fix that with the zombie bore mechanic. Now, it's kind of unusual. And the fact that I was expecting something along the lines of, okay, you come back and you're half zombified, if that's a word, I just made up that word. And, uh, okay, and I expect, like, all right, maybe you can't carry uh, as much gear, and maybe you you can't even use gear at all, and maybe you have a random chance of attacking your party members. But really, none of that happens. The, uh, In fact, it's, it just makes you harder to kill. The only bad part is that you lose your extra action, as far as I know, uh, is you lose, you lose your extra action from leveling up, which maybe you die before you even level up, and it doesn't even matter to you, but... Uh, it just feels like it's better if you die at least once, uh, or if you're just maybe it's bad if you're just thinking of it as having two lives instead of one life to lose. So I don't know. It just felt like kind of an awkward way for them to fix the game. And to be sure, if you're having a really tough time, you're still going to be eliminated. All right. It's just less likely that that's going to happen. Now the other new mechanic in the game are the berserker zombies, and again, it's they look cool. All the, I mean, Leia, let's go back a second. All of this game is beautiful. They did an even better job with the sculpts in this game. And the Berserker zombies are no exception. They look really, really cool. They're starting to bend the concept of what a zombie is. I don't know how much longer they're going to be able to start keep calling these things zombies in the traditional sense. I mean, the Berserker zombies have look like these big armored titans with like giant spikes sticking out of them, or at least the... Uh, the Abomination zom Berserker Zombies do, but nevertheless, they look awesome. Gameplay-wise, <laughs> all it means is that you have to use melee weapons for them. That's not a huge deal. It doesn't change the game. And that's why I said that this game just adds tons and tons of more of the new stuff. Uh, some of the new little bits that you can add to the board, uh, like some of the new prison sections, do add some new mechanics as far as the switch flipping and the doors, but to be completely honest with you i don't necessarily think it's i think that's just a completely neutral <laughs> extension of the game in the sense that while it's cool to have more variety they're so fiddly and the game was really fiddly enough as it is so it's and that's one of the main complaints i hear from people in my personal group is just like okay i want to play zombie side but man we have to set it up and then take it down so that's why that addition, the new stuff to the map, is kind of a wash in that sense. Now, it sounds like I'm really slamming the game, and I don't mean to, because I love Zombie Side. And I this was I got I kickstarted this with no hesitation, knowing what was going to be in the box, because I did want more. I wanted more sculpts, I wanted a little more variety, I wanted new survivors. All the new survivors and their new abilities are pretty cool, even again if they're just more of the same of different types of survivors from the core game. So if you love Zombie Side, you probably already have this. <laughs> you probably already kickstarted this to some degree or another. If you didn't love Zombie Side, just keep walking. This isn't going to change your mind, and I get it. I get why people don't like the game. If you are on the fence, and if you're deciding whether or not you want to buy this or the base game, you're probably going to want to go for this. Because there is more in the box, there's more unique stuff, even if you don't get the Kickstarter version. The Zombie Vor idea of the different miniatures is all pretty cool even if it doesn't change the game a lot. So you want to start with this game, assuming you can get it for the same price, and take it from there. You probably don't need to go back to the other one, but having them both is cool. So, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, reminding you to get out there in game every day in and every way. Take care.